Now you all have been banging down my proverbial YouTube doors for a while now asking me to do some videos on anal play and pegging. Well, my patrons finally voted on it. So today is the day. We're talking booty basics for beginners. <laughs> myself some time preemptively I'm going to address all of you horny little betas who are going to comment below you didn't talk about pegging you didn't talk about pegging please mistress do a video on pegging mistress please 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 if any of you horny little betas puts that in the comments of this video not only will I ignore your comment but I will delete your comment all right today we're talking about booty basics for beginners pegging is very very different pegging is on my list of YouTube topics so my patrons get a new batch of YouTube topics every single month and they vote on them this month they did not vote on pegging but they did vote on anal play so if you want a hand in getting the pegging basics video up here live on YouTube then go join my patron and you can vote yourself all right, now let's talk about the different types of anal play because anal play is basically encompassing any play around the booty booty area, all right? So you can use toys, anal toys specifically, or even anal training kits that are specifically designed to gradually ease you and your body into this. Anal fingering, anal fisting, anal sex, Anal douching, pegging, which all of you little subbies know about, and rimming. These are just a few options for you to explore when you are thinking about some anal play. Now, I do have to say this, it's not for everyone. And do not feel any pressure, male or female, top or bottom, do not feel any pressure to engage in this, okay? There are benefits and there are pleasures to be had in this, but again, you do not have to put this on your kinky plate. BDSM is not a closet to come out of. It is a buffet to choose from. And if this is not sounding appetizing to you in any way, shape, or form, then you do not have to put this on your kinky plate. It doesn't make you vanilla, okay? It doesn't make you less kinky. Um, there's nothing wrong with you if you have no desire for anal play or anal sex, all right? Sex should be a pleasurable way to connect between you and your partner. Don't bring that judgment into it, okay? So although anal play is not for everyone, it is for some of us, and some of us like certain facets of it more than others. But there are certain pleasures to be had, like I said, if you're a male or a female or just from a relational perspective. What I really like about anal play for men is they get to experience a deeper level of empathy. To be on the receiving end of penetration is something that men don't get to experience. Straight men don't get to experience a lot of times and I think it would actually bring a lot of empathy to the sexual experience to understand what goes on, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally when you are on the receiving end of penetration. And then physically, anal sex can stimulate the prostate in men, which can be incredibly pleasurable. Now, I have never had a prostate, so I'm not speaking from experience here, but from the top part of this experience, very pleasurable for men who have prostates. And for those of us ladies, in addition to just feeling more full physically during the sexual experience, it can stimulate our G-spot and our internal clitoris. Ladies, what you see on the outside is just the tip of the beautiful iceberg, ladies. And so anal play can actually stimulate some of those really pleasurable internal organs for us as well. And then for couples who engage in this, there's often feelings of deep connection and intimacy because this is kind of unconventional. It requires a lot of trust and a lot of vulnerability. I mean, if you're talking about playing around someone's back door, you've got to be really comfortable with yourself and your partner, right? So it just fuels an environment for connection and intimacy and vulnerability. So how do we start to play? If this is an interest of you or your partners, how do we jump into this? Well, I actually have five steps to prepare 
for this. So we're going to talk about the five steps for you to prepare, the four steps that you need to take as you play, and then some bonus pro tips. Avoid greasy, heavy foods, or anything that causes gastrointestinal distress. All right, you gotta meal plan a little bit when you are approaching anal play because it will make the experience overall better for everyone involved. If you're feeling bloated, gassy, all of that, you're probably not gonna want your partner all up in your stuff, you know what I'm saying? So in order to, again, eliminate some anxiety, some possible hygienic concerns, etc., then just change up your diet for a day or two before you're planning on engaging in this. Make sure your insides are all nice and clean and you're feeling good. Also, have a bowel movement prior to play. Now, I'm not saying you have to specifically time it two hours before, 30 minutes before. Don't be frantic about it, but just make sure your system is clear and cleansed before you start getting into this. Again, for nothing else than just your peace of mind. Chances are you are not going to just have a bowel movement on your partner during anal play or anal sex, okay? That's not how your system is set up. But for your own peace of mind, for you to be able to just relax, let go, make sure not only that your system is nice and clean and fresh inside, but that you have had a bowel movement before you play wash thoroughly and or douche. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Not sure if that's true, but it sure takes precedence when it comes to anal play, all right? Just because we are navigating in some territory that typically is unhygienic doesn't mean that we need to make this just a really gross, raunchy, disgusting experience. It can be a really pleasurable, erotic, beautiful experience, but we probably want to make sure, again, for our own peace of mind, for our ability to just let go, we want to be thoroughly cleaned and prepared. And if you're new to this and you're worried about your partner being that close to that part of your body, oh my gosh, how's it gonna smell? How's it, you know, all of those concerns, then feel free to use a natural oil, like a lavender oil or a rose oil, not essential oil. Do not put concentrated essential oils on yourself, child. That is not what I'm saying. I'm talking about diluted natural oils that you would get, you know, for your face or whatever that smell like roses or that smell like lavender or anything natural that's naturally fragrant. After you're done cleansing yourself, just rub some oil on your hips, on your booty, just all over, and you will start to feel not only more sensual, but like this isn't a dirty area. It smells good. It oiled and ready to go it's clean again this doesn't have to be a dirty disgusting raunchy taboo thing it can be done in a really beautiful way that builds intimacy eroticism and connection and if you're really concerned about the hygiene issue then condoms are great for anal sex now i'm going to stop here and say that you should be having protected sex if you are having multiple partners, okay? I speak mainly to couples in committed relationships, okay? So if you are a couple in a committed relationship and you're both, you know, clean, you're both not going outside of the relationship, no one else in society is gonna get your bodily fluids, you can be a little bit more lax, you know what I mean? But if you are actively sharing multiple partners, going out in the world and sharing your bodily fluids, by God, please, you must, Use protection, anally, vaginally, okay? Use protection, always. More so when it comes to the hygiene aspect of especially anal sex. If that's a concern for you, condom is a great way to go. So those are my tips on how to prep. Now let's talk about how to play. And I've got four S's for you on this one to make it very, very easy to remember. Slick, small, slow, and speech. First point here is Slick. The anus does not self lubricate. So you have to make that happen. You've got to use more lube than you even think you need. Okay? Lube, 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 and more lube. Don't be afraid to stop and apply lube as you are playing. All right, again, the anus does not self lubricate, okay? Just because you're excited and you're staying in that state of arousal, it's not going to reflect physically in that part of your body when it comes to lubrication. So lube it up, babies. Small, 
the anus is not as malleable as the vagina, all right? The anus was not meant, designed, built to have a baby's head pushed through it, okay? So it's not as malleable, which means those muscles need time to relax and to expand. You do not want to just start off with anal sex with a completely erect penis and just go to town. No, no, no. Start small, small anal toys. Your pinky, okay? Get an anal training kit that very gradually moves you up in size, in girth, etc. Slow. The anus has both an internal and external sphincter. The internal sphincter are the muscles that we cannot control and for good reason, okay? We wanna keep what's inside our bodies inside our bodies. The external sphincter is something that we can control just through breathing, through mindfulness, through relaxation, etc. So that's why going slow is my third rule of anal play here is you do not wanna just ram it in, okay? We want to go slow in our pace because we want to give the receiver time to be able to relax those external muscles. It's not going to be pleasurable if they're so anxious and so stressed about this and everything's tight and contracted, they will not enjoy it. They need to be able to let go, breathe, relax, release, go slow. Speech, anal play and anal sex, is very different territory and it comes with a whole bunch of different emotions and experiences and sensations and so speech communication needs to be absolutely paramount in your play and you guys know this is how i feel about every relationship especially kinky connections you have to talk okay we can never get intimate which is the goal through all these beautiful kinky connections without opening our mouth and communicating in a healthy loving way with our partner so especially when it comes to anal play especially for you the receiver don't be afraid to talk to give feedback Ooh, out too much pull back i don't like that add more lube etc okay don't be afraid and you know what receivers if you are so codependent that you cannot assert your voice and assert your needs and assert your boundaries, don't go here because you're probably going to do damage to yourself. Okay. Don't go here. If you're too codependent to open your mouth and properly communicate, this is not the play for you. So with that being said, let's jump into my four final pro tips for you. Now, these are things that you don't want to miss. I laid the groundwork for you here, but this is the really, really important stuff. This is going to save you from potentially getting into some harmful or painful territory. Number one, partners of females prioritize clitoral stimulation. Okay, do not neglect the clit. She's not going to love this if you're not working the clip. Ladies, comment below and let me know if you agree, but as a woman who has engaged in anal play and anal sex before, and who has spoken to many, many women in my community who have engaged in anal play and engaged in anal sex, the consensus is clear, work the clip. Okay, it's not that we're not open to it, but how it stimulates us internally isn't going to give us this crazy mind blowing orgasm if you're counting on that and using porn as a reference for it. And to that note, all this bullshit and porn about ass to mouth, okay, the guy's penetrating, whips it out, puts her on her knees, shoves it in her mouth. Are you kidding me? Let me just say that's porn. That's porn. It's not hygienic. It's beyond degrading. And Often it's used in scenes of violence against women. Now, if you have a hardcore degradation kink and you really like that, great. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that. What I'm speaking to right now when I'm going on this little tangent here is the pressure that you may feel to engage in that because of the toxic narrative of porn. And I'm here to tell you it's bullshit. Okay, it's absolutely bullshit. You don't watch. Are you kidding me? If a man ever tried to do that to me, I'd put him on his knees so fucking fast. Anal play isn't for everyone. All facets of anal play aren't for everyone. But I want the takeaway from this tangent to be no pressure. 
you are not obligated to live up to the toxic, abusive narrative in porn. You are n under no obligation to want that, to desire that, or to accept that from somebody. Mm -mm, no. So prioritize clitoral stimulation for your woman. Okay, boys, just helping you out. You want anal play? More of it? Work the clip, baby. Work the clip. Also, do not use toys or objects without a flared base or retrieval cord of some sort. Why? Because the rectum is expansive and no, you wouldn't be able to just poop it out. I would also recommend metal or glass toys for beginners because they're non-porous, which means that any lube that you put on the metal or glass anal toy, whatever, is going to be incredibly slick and it's going to stay incredibly slick. Therefore, reducing any friction, therefore contributing to a more comfortable experience, especially for your newbies. And probably the biggest, most important thing that I really need you all to pay attention to here is never, ever, 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 ever use desensitizing lube. I don't even know why the fuck. Okay, here's the thing. With desensitizing lube, pain is your body's way of saying, hey, we have reached a limit, okay? And if we proceed past this limit, damage will occur, okay? So pain is a good way for our body to communicate limits with us. If you use desensitizing lube, you're stopping that communication from happening. And what happens a lot of times is couples will be really excited about this because they've been bored in their sex life. Ooh, let's try some anal play. And so bam, we just go for it because they didn't watch this incredibly informative and brilliant YouTube video. And so he just starts plowing into her and it hurts. It hurts for all of the reasons that I explained today. There's something wrong with the receiver or there's something wrong with what we're doing. So the fix is we are going to use desensitizing lube. The problem with that is you're not fixing why you started feeling pain in the first place. So you're just going to keep going with what you're doing, not be able to feel it and actually cause harm. If anal sex is painful for you, if anal play is painful for you, you need to stop and go back to those four S's that I discussed. You need to get things more slick, okay? You need to get things smaller, you need to go slower, and you need to start speaking to each other. If you're wanting some visual examples of what we talked about today, I have released a private patron-only YouTube video where I bust out some of my favorite anal toys and we talk about their uses in correlation to the foundation we laid today. So if you're interested in watching that, again, private patron only video, just follow the patron link in the description and check it out. Is that where you're gonna be for the video? Yeah. Okay.